It's that time of the week again. It's Rugby League Lunch Hour live on the Lub Rugby League Facebook page. We've got Josh in again. With Josh McAllister is um, on the JDG media team doing a bit of media and marketing uh, and a bit of everything on uh, Lub Rugby League as well. James Gordon isn't here again today. Uh, I don't know what he's, he's not here for this time. Another morning off. Uh, it's probably, I think it's been near, near enough a week since I last saw uh, the boss James. Uh, it must be on his jollies or something like that. Uh, so we'll be t- talking all things uh, Rugby League today. Uh, Andrew Derbyshire, uh, the deputy editor of Love Rugby League. The big news that has broken out this morning is Aidan Caesar is joining Huddersfield on a two year deal. It's been confirmed finally uh, by the Giants. What do you make of that? I think it's a massive signing for, for the Giants and, and it's a, a massive plus, isn't it, for, for Super League? Another plus for Super League, isn't it? Another marquee signing, another quality player. NRL fan finalist, you know, mm-hmm. a good performer for the Camera Raiders, a good player in the NRL. Um, another good signing, as we said. Um, it's a quality signing for Huddersfield. I think they've struggled with their halfbacks the past couple of years, trying to find the right combination of the sixes and sevens. So bringing him in will, uh, you know, will really improve them, I think, in 2020. Yeah, I think the, the signing of Matt Frawley last season uh, ended up being a little bit of a disappointment, mm-hmm. wasn't it? A lot, a lot were expected from Frawley, uh, but because he'd only made, I think it was 20, 25 NRL appearances for the Canterbury Bulldogs, he didn't come, up, come over with, with a lot of experience, did he? I think he, he's, he struggled to adapt to life in Super League. Uh, he's even been linked with a move to Halifax, but I think Halifax have squashed them rumours that have been reported in recent weeks. So who knows what the future holds for, for Matt Frawley. Will he stay at Huddersfield? Obviously they've got Lee Gaskell as well. And you'd, you'd think that it'd be Lee Gaskell and Aidan Seas in the, in the halves. And obviously they've signed uh, Jamaica international Ashton Golden, who will play at full-back. Daniel McIntosh will probably move to the wing as well. They've made a couple of decent signings, haven't they? Uh, Huddersfield, they've got James Gavitt from uh, the NRL as well. He's obviously represented Samoa. Um, a fantastic uh, back roller in his day. Um, I, I think Huddersfield have gone about the business pretty well. We may as well, since, since we're talking about Huddersfield, who do you, which team in Super League do you, do you fear for down at the bottom uh, next season? Do you think Huddersfield will be near the bottom? Or do you think... I think before, before the agencies uh, sign in from this morning, I'd have put them at the bottom or near the bottom. But I think with this signing, uh, a, a major boost, he, he can push them forward. There's a couple of teams. Um, yeah, Super League's always close, so you don't want to miss anyone off. Um, Come on, it's your job. <laughs> you're, you're a journalist, Josh, well, it's your job. I'm trying to think. Who do you think's not? I think Old Carroll finished bottom, personally, next year. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. I can see you in that one. I don't think Sean Kenny Dow will help him, do you not? Well, he's a, he's a good player, don't get me wrong. A solid um, player in the NRL, uh, New Zealand international, I think about, around about 28, 29 times that he's played for the Kiwis, so obviously he brings over a lot of experience for KR, but I think they've not recruited as well as I would have expected them to. Obviously, they brought the five lads over from Bradford. Uh, but a couple of them are still very, very young. I don't, I don't expect all of them to break into OPR's first team next season. And obviously Josh Drinkwater has returned to Catalans as well, uh, which leaves a bit of a hole. Uh, and they've not really replaced him, have they? Not really. they they've, not, they've not got many half-back options for next season. So I do fear for, for OPR, but then again, Tony Smith, I think he's a great coach as well. So And I, can't, I just couldn't imagine Tony Smith... A Tony Smith team finishing at the bottom of the Super League. Because you're not really seen that, boy. Do you fear for Salford, do you think, with the, the players they've lost and who they've replaced them with? I do. Uh, but I don't I don't think they'll be anywhere near the bottom. But I don't, I don't think they'll be anywhere near where they were... This this year? This this season. Well, yeah, last season. Uh, afternoon, Louis Banks. Um, yeah, we, we saw for them. They've had a lot, of, a lot of change, haven't they? And, that, and that's... A shame really with the Red Devils because that's what they always have every single season it because obviously the budget isn't as competitive uh, with the top uh, clubs in Super League they, they get the best players cherry picked and Ian Watson uh, admitted that when I spoke to him last season they all, 
it's, it's the same old story every year. Whoever performs to the highest at Salford seems to be attracting a lot of interest and then they, end, they might stay on for a season and then they'll end up leaving or they might leave uh, there and then. So uh, it is a shame with Salford. But then again, they've made a, they've made a couple of shrewd signings and uh, the one thing that we can give Salford plenty of credit for is that they're very good with what I call project players. So they brought Josh Johnson in from Barrow in the, in the, in the Championship last season uh, and it, he impressed me in particular uh, at Salford towards the back end of the year. Just missed out on, on a place in the grand final team. Uh, obviously they've lost Wogan Tompkins as well, who, who I think will be a big miss. He's nothing special going forward, Logan, but he, he certainly does the hard work in defence. He gets through 50 plus tackles per game. Uh, I just I don't I don't really know where they'll, where they'll finish. I think I think Saints, Wigan, Warrington will finish in the top three. Who, who do you reckon will finish fourth and fifth? I, th- I think I think could could maybe put a case for for fourth or fifth. I think Warrington could. Fourth or fifth. Do you think they'll finish top three? Saints, Wigan, yeah, possibly. Maybe Castleford. Castleford fourth or fifth. They made a few good signings. Ca- Castleford are a, w- are a weird team, I think, because even though they, they play amazing rugby and, and it's great to watch for the neutral and, and for the Castleford fans, it's brilliant to watch. I think they've slipped away from 2017 when they. They did reach the, the Super League Grand Final. I know they, they lost to Leeds there, but I thought that year they were, they were excellent and I think they've not been uh, up to that standard uh, in recent seasons. But obviously, the, 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 uh, well, the injuries have been cruel to them. Uh, they have struggled with the uh, injury list quite a lot, uh, especially last season. Um, they was missing the likes of Grant Millington and Mike McMeekin and obviously Luke Gale. Uh, who didn't play at all uh, last season, so I think he, Luke Gale will be a big miss, but then can, can Leeds make it into the top five? Can Do you think? I don't think I... I, I, I forward out with Catalan because <laughs> I think I predicted I predicted Catalan to, to have a good season last, last year, I predicted them to be in the five, I think, uh, and it just didn't happen. And it, it, that, that's a, a crying shame, really, for the Dragons, because they've always... For, for the last five or six years, the, every single year before the season started, you look at the team on paper, it's a fantastic team, and uh, it's um, you, you always think they could possibly uh, like they could possibly win some silverware, they could pick, pick up some silverware. Obviously, they, they won the Challenge Cup in 2018, but in Super League, they've never really come close, have they? Uh, they, they haven't come close at all. Um, the form is everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think they ever get a, a good winning streak. I've, well, oh, they're, they're always strong at home, and teams always fear going to Perpignan. It's up because obviously it's a, a difficult trip. But even last year, the likes of London were beating them. Yeah, uh, you, you are right, and and Salford put I think forty odd past them at home, uh, but it's their away form, they're abysmal. Yeah. When when Wigan were going through through the dreadful patch earlier on in the season, Wigan put forty two points to nil on on Catalans at the DW Stadium. And that that just can't be happening. Not with the team that Catalans have got. They've got talent throughout the team. Um, Sam Tompkins is a, a brilliant player. Uh, but but look at the pack. The pack's one of the best in the competition. Sam Cassiano, he seemed to make a bit of an impact when he came in uh, for the Dragons last season. So it, it will be interesting. I think I think I think Wigan, Warrington, and Saints will be disappointed if, if they don't finish in the in the top Definitely. three. Uh, definitely uh, next year just looking at what these, what, what each of the, each of them have spent and what they've already got uh, I think it will be disappointing but can Leeds maybe push that top five on paper Catalan are up there aren't they as you say Fall of yeah, that, yeah, James yeah. Maloney Sam Tompkins yeah the, the, they just struggle away yeah you, you are right they're, they're a fantastic team on paper but games aren't won on paper, on paper. Um, London have announced the squad numbers for 2020 I think it's a very impressive squad we'll just go through uh, maybe the top 18 uh, 1 Ashall Bot 2 Igordo 3 Armitage 4 uh, Lovell uh, 5 Dixon 6 Aston 7 uh, Morgan Smith uh, 8 Batty 9 Pelissier 10 Butler 11 Walters 12 Curran 13 Adebayi 
14 Fozard, 15 Richards, 16 Krasnicki, 17 Medals, 18 Norman, uh, 19 uh, of Dune. Um, that, we, we're just running through the, the first 18, 19 though. Uh, a very strong team for, for London uh, next season. Yeah, very strong team in the Championship. I think the odds, I think you put out a post about the odds and I think yeah. you're up there, aren't you? I think with a team like that, you're going to look for promotion. I, again, maybe away for them because of the travel um, but yeah a team like that on paper you can see why they're favourites because they've got some quality signings in there some quality players alright then did you make an early, early prediction of you tipping to, to gain promotion from championship to super league then next season uh, it would be between three for me because I think Femston Rovers have signed some really good players Craig Hall uh, mm. and a few others um, but I think they might just finish third I think for me it's between London and Toulouse Again, Toulouse, their form can sometimes be funny. Um, they've almost made it, didn't they? Um, but I'll, I'll go with London then. I'll go with the odds and I'll say London. Okay, I'll I, I probably... I think I feel Lee are building something. Um, I, I know about Lee last season, but I think I think they're a strong team. You on back Lee every season, don't you? I, do, I think I do, actually. <laughs> I think I back, I think I back Lee more seasons to get promoted. <laughs> Maybe um, you should start and they might actually win it. Uh, but I think I, th I think they'll be up there. I think Witness maybe will, will push the top five. I think even though they've lost a lot of players, Witness, I think they've still got a good core of players that they've got a good mix of uh, experience and youth. Um, they've managed to keep some very, very good players. The Chapelow brothers as well in the front row, they should go very well in the championship next season. Uh, so I think, I think they're... they're we're in for a, good, a little treat in the championship next next season. Uh, the World Cup draw has been confirmed. It was it was put back. Uh, James Gordon, the editor, did some digging. Uh, he found out that it was delayed. Put it out there a couple of weeks ago, and it's now been confirmed that the twenty twenty one Rugby League World Cup draw will take place on January sixteenth, uh, twenty twenty. And there's a nice little video, a nice little advertisement promo video. Uh, that's gone out by the Rugby League World Cup team as well. I'd recommend uh, checking it out. I can't. I don't even know how to explain it, so there's no point in me explaining <laughs> it. Uh, we've got a couple of comments coming in on Facebook as well. Louis Bank says, "Any rumours who is taking the number 16 jersey at uh, Warrington?" Well, uh, we we don't know anything, uh, any names just yet, Louis. But we do expect Warrington to sign um, a forward before. Uh, next season, obviously they've been linked with Chris Tavano, the New Zealand international. I don't think that is happening anymore. He's he's quite settled in Australia with his family. Uh, they've been linked with Sam Lazone, who's a Samoa international as well. But um, speculation has gone quiet over his name as well in recent weeks. But we definitely expect there to be a, a prop coming in to the Halliwell Jones Stadium before. Uh, the season commences. Uh, did they need a forward? Do you think? I, I think I think they've got a pretty good squad, mate. To yeah, be I, mean, fair. I, I, I do think one one big forward will help them. I but I, but I'd, I'd like Warrington to give some academy lads a go, um, and I think Lewis Johnson is probably ready to step up and make his mark in Super League. Um, he can play anywhere in the forward pack at, at the minute. He's actually got a, a lot of pace about him as well for a, a forward. I'd, I'd like to see him. Give it a go, and obviously they've signed, they've signed um, Sammy Kabula as well from Wigan, who's, uh, if you've not seen him, he's an absolute unit, isn't he? He's a big he's a, He is a tank, he's about six foot two, six foot three, probably 110, 115 kilos. Um, he's, a, he's a big boy, and he's, I, think, I think he's 19, uh, maybe 20. Um, Brett says, who, uh, who do you think to Huddersfield's recruitment, or what do you think into Huddersfield's recruitment in Ed, Kenny Edwards, James Gabbett and Aidan Caesar? We were actually discussing this probably before you made the comment, Brett. I, I think it's a fantastic uh, bit of recruitment from the Giants. I've been quite critical of Huddersfield's recruitment in recent seasons. I don't think it's been good enough. Uh, I think they've spent a lot of money where they don't need to spend a lot of money and they've not recruited in areas they do need to recruit in re recent years. But um, but I've got I've got to give Huddersfield credit over the over the off season. I think uh, they've done uh, very very well to to get James Gavitt in. If if he can stay fit, Gavitt, he could be um, one of the standout uh, forwards in the competition. He's, he's just got a lot of power. 
um, and I think Huddersfield fans will like uh, to watch him. Kenny Edwards, we all know what Kenny Edwards can bring. Uh, fire, aggression, he'll, he'll wind the opposition team up. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's a strong running back role, isn't he, Josh? Yeah, he is. And I think there are a couple of names we didn't mention last week for the Exiles team. Yeah. Um, ones that can definitely yeah. make it. And Aiden Caesar being another one. So another plus if Exiles are to return, which uh, I'd be keen on. I think you are as well, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see the Exiles return. But I was at the RFL media, media briefing last week at Saddleworth. hosted at the, the amateur club there. A great little setup, by the way. Plenty of hills, though. Plenty of hills, and it took me and James near enough two hours to get back to to Warrington from um, Saddleworth in rush hour traffic, which wasn't always fun. But anyway, <laughs> at the media briefing, uh, Ralph Raymond, the chief executive of the RFL, uh, was asked if he could see the exile returning in any way, shape, or form, maybe for an, a mid-season international against uh, the England team, uh, but. He, he, he straight away just said no <laughs> and that were it just a one word answer simply no uh, so I don't think the exiles will be returning anytime soon unfortunately even though they could maybe have a, a world beater of a, of a, of a side uh, Chris Young oh and Aiden Caesar as well fantastic signing for, for Huddersfield um, Brett because I think there won't be many hours uh, with the potential well with, with the capabilities of uh, Caesar in Super League next season. Obviously, George Williams moving from Wigan to Canberra has kind of pushed uh, Caesar out a little bit because Sam Williams, the ex Wakefield Alpax, just signed a new deal as well with the Raiders, so there, was, there wasn't really uh, any room for um, Caesar at Canberra next season. So he's, he's taken up a big money deal with the Giants. Huddersfield's first ever marquee player. Uh, I think he'll. I think he'll go well. Uh, hopefully he can stay fit. Hopefully he can have a good season, and uh, hopefully we can we can all enjoy him in Super League. Uh, Chris Young says Sofa might not have a better team than they did last year, but we have a better squad depth, which will come in handy this year. Uh, get Sebastian Ikehi for and Pauli Pauli fit of firing and with Luke Yates uh, doing the graph then Salford could have a better pack than last season uh, arguably uh, top 5 isn't out of the question some confidence there isn't there to be fair Chris has got a point I, I forgot the signings of uh, Luke Yates if I'm totally honest uh, and Pauli 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 has received a lot of stick in the past um just because of his, his fitness really uh, his lack of fitness but I, I, I think he's a great player to have on your side because he, he does some damage to, to defences doesn't he big and scary isn't he and that's what you want for a forward he is uh, and I think if, if you can maybe just trim down a little bit get a little bit more fitter uh, but manage to keep it, his, mass, his big frame his massive frame uh, then I, I think he, he could do some damage Luke Yates an absolutely unbelievable uh, find from London last season because no one knew who Luke, Luke Yates were, was uh, in all respect to him before he came to Super League. It was a bit of a no-name at first at the Broncos and suddenly out of out of nowhere he's making 50-plus tackles per game. He's taking in 15-plus carries per game. Uh, an unbelievable work rate. Uh, I think it'll go very, very well for, for the Red Devils. You wouldn't be surprised if they didn't if they did finish in top five, would you? Because as you say, because mm. the squad is good, they've got some a quality coach, mm. haven't they? So if they did finish top five, despite you know the loss of Jack Nathan's and a few others, you wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they did finish top five because of that squad. I wouldn't, and uh, obviously they signed Jack Oman Rod as well uh, from Featherstone. I think he, he could be a nice little shrewd signing. Um, he doesn't come with a, a, a big reputation as such, but he's a big big unit as well. So I think if if Solford can get him in, in the best condition he can be then uh, he's, well he's already ripped ripped to death I, I think if, if uh, he can, they, well the, the conditioning staff at Salford can get him firing then uh, I think he could be a solid player Sebastian can he he for uh, what a tongue twister that is but uh, <laughs> try. he was he was in the named in the Super League Dream Team in 2017 uh, he's he's not been uh, in Sam Wolford's plans at Huddersfield but because he was named in the Dream Team in 2017, there's clearly like some potential there. Yeah, yeah, and what better place to do it than Salford? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, Louis says, Paulie, top signing. Uh, 
It was very, very good when he went to saw for a moment. He, he's a, he's a, he's big. I, I, of the days. He's I big really and he's strong, but as you say, he just mm. needs to cut down a little and get his fitness up. I, I, I really made a, joke, made a joke, didn't he, when he scored once? He yeah. lifted his shirt up and slapped his belly. Yeah. So he, he, he probably knows it himself. So if you just slim down a little bit, get a bit fitter, and suddenly he could be one of the best forwards yeah. in the game, possibly. Louis also says Ricky Ralph is really not the man to take rugby league to the next level. He is too much like the last management we had before the, uh, who took the game backwards. I'm, I'm going to stick up for uh, Ralph, I think, on, on this occasion. I think in, in rugby, in, well, in any sport, when, when stuff isn't going right, I think the quick, the quick fix or the, or the quick... Way to bl- to put blame on someone is to just blame the the sports governing body, uh, and I think that that's what happens in rugby league as well. Uh, sometimes it often, when stuff goes wrong in football, everyone blames the FA. When stuff goes wrong, wrong in rugby league, everyone blames the RFL. Uh, I, I, I actually I, I actually believe that Ralph is doing a pretty decent job uh, at the RFL. Uh, I think he's is it as honest as he can be to the media. We, uh, us in the media, we 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 would like some decisions to be made quicker um, than what they are made uh, currently. But apart from that, I think he's not doing too bad of a job. Is is Ralph? I think he gets a lot of unwarranted uh, stick, um, and the, and the same for Robert Elston really at Super League. I think it's easy to, easy to just blame the the big boys, the the big bosses all the time. Um, but I don't. I don't think rugby league's in as bad a place as what as what some people make out at the minute. Mm. You know, I don't think Josh. Nah. <laughs> Do you want me to just keep, keep talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll just keep talking. <laughs> Valentine Holm was there last week, so Valentine Holm has uh, returned to rugby league following a stint in the NFL. He signed a six-year contract six with uh, the North Queensland uh, Cowboys. Very good signing. Uh, Jared Samet was in. Th- in international action for Malta as they went down to defeat against Wales Dragon Arts uh, in Bridge End on Saturday. There's been a lot of NRL news um, over the last week. I saw AJ Brimson's extended his state Gold Coast Titans. In France, Anthony Marion has signed a new deal with Toulouse. Zach Brames uh, penned a new contract with Hunslet as well. Uh, if you've not already listened to it, the, po- the final, final Hooter podcast uh, of 2019 is out now. David Parkinson and Adrian Jackson always do a good job um, with the final Hooter podcast. They're discussing uh, Great Britain's disappointing tour and uh, they also highlight and analyse the lack of creativity among other issues. So I recommend listening to that if you haven't already done so. Semi Radrada, the Fijian rugby union sensation has put Rugby League on hold. He won't be returning to the 13 side game anytime soon. Uh, he's just signed for Bristol, not Bristol Rugby League, Bristol Burrs Rugby Union Club. Um, so he will be playing in England, but he won't be moving to Toronto and he won't be going to the NRL. Uh, he's staying in Rugby League. Oh, well, well, let's talk about another big transfer story in Rugby League this week, Josh. Leeds and Huddersfield have completed a swap deal. Uh, Cruz Lehman has joined Leeds on a two year contract with youngster, young back rower uh, Owen Trigg went the other way to uh, Huddersfield what do you make of that? Cruz Lehman when the announcement was made you know he's obviously got some, a lot of respect for the players in the game because a lot of professional players come in and say what a good sign it is for Leeds uh, I haven't watched Huddersfield too much recently so I can't comment on the player uh, himself but I think the fans and as, as I say players are excited about it then there's obviously something about him and that next step maybe he can have leads towards that you know possible top five that you've been talking about I've watched Owen, Owen Trout a couple of times as well uh, when he was in the under 19s at Leeds a uh, solid player I think he's got a big future in the game I think he signed a four year deal with uh, the Giants as well so obviously I think Huddersfield fans can expect a lot to come from from Trout uh, a former England Academy International uh, moving on to Toronto, the head coach Brian McDermott has committed his long-term future to the, to the Canadian club. Signed a five-year contract 
It's a long one. Well, I think with recent comments he's made, I think it's wise for him to sign a five year because I don't think any other clubs have come after him with some comments he's made. Well, I, I hinted at the Northern Tone coins. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think any other clubs have come racing after him. But it's a, a good a good extension for them. You know, he knows how to win win titles. He knows how to take. He's he's, he's mm. taken the team to the Super League. So why not reward him with a long one, mm. a long contract, and show your confidence in him. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Barrow are the favourites to uh, secure an immediate return to the Championship, Josh. Uh, league, the League One odds have been released by Lover League sponsors and League One Championship and Super League sponsors. Betfred, uh, the Raiders finished second bottom in the Championship last season, uh, but they are priced at 5-2 to two to uh, gain yes. promotion back to the Championship. Which is interesting over the likes of Newcastle Thunder, who, you know, with the recent episodes, I think on the R League app, uh, you know their goal is to get to the championship. Mm. So it's interesting to see that they're favourites over them. And I think they managed to retain a few good players. Jamie Dallimore, I think, stayed there. So to to manage to retain those players, I think definitely helps them. Interesting to see Newcastle uh, third favourites uh, at nine to two. Yeah. Doncaster ahead of them. It is interesting. Um, as I say, they obviously got, they've got a good setup, good coaches, a couple of good players. I think they released quite a few players last week. Including Missy Tal Papa, yeah. um, but I think I've, I, if you ask me the same question like I did for the championship, I, I'd back Newcastle Thunder. I'd be sticking a couple of quid on them. Rochdale Hornets, uh, who were relegated from the championship uh, last season, they're eight to one. How do you think Rochdale will go in in twenty uh, twenty, Josh? Again, interesting because obviously with the uh, recent talks with sort of the. Uh, Ex Swinton board taking over, and uh, I think there's, there's four of them. I think they're in a good place. Uh, I'm not seeing many signings for Rochdale though. Uh, I don't know if you have, uh, or re signings or anything like that. I don't think a lot's come out. So I think if this takeover happens, I think it'll be good for them. Then they can start going forward. You saw what they did with Swinton. Swinton finished ninth, uh, which is one of the best finishes in, in 20 plus years, I think it was. So Rochdale, you know, they could be pushing for it. Obviously, you've done a little bit of work at Swinton, uh, Josh. You're in the in the Swinton Lions media team, uh, so you you'd have like a little bit of an insight into what goes on in the background uh, and the running of the Swinton club. Do you think the the directors at Swinton will do a good job at, at Rochdale if everything's approved and everything goes ahead? I think so. As I say, they, they showed that they did that at Swinton. It's finished ninth. Some very good wins. They they beat Toulouse away. They put they backed they, they backed Stuart Little. They put a bit of money into the club, signed some good players like Devin Benyon, so I think Rochdale are in a good place if, if they get the same board uh, going forward, you know what, they could, as fourth is probably about right, uh, I just, not much going on on the field I think with, with signings and re-signings, I don't, I don't know if you've seen much, um, so it's probably a fair to be 8-1. Eight, eight well I think, I think um, Sean Penkovich has been linked with the move to Rochdale for, for 2020, we'll, we'll see how that one pans out, it was most recently playing at Workington as well. Um, I think yeah, I think he was coached by Rochdale coach Matt Callender at Halifax. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. If you fancy an outside bet, West Wales Raiders, who are currently without a coach, is 66 to 1. 66 to 1. The same odds as Coventry, which, oh, which I, I think is a bit disrespectful to the Burrs. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, they've, they've made a couple of signings recently as well. They've made a lot of signings. Yeah, they have. Uh, I think they should be higher up. Uh, Working, but I wouldn't be sticking my money on them. Working to 8-1, to one, same price as Rochdale. I know they're good. I, I, think, I think they're a nice little outsiders, to be fair. I, th- I think it, the money's got to be going on Newcastle. Surely this year, the money has to go on Newcastle with the, the budget they've got and what they're spending. Obviously, they only just missed out last year. But Dennis Betts is remaining director of rugby there, Simon Finnegan the coach. You've got players like Quinton Lalu Tonga guy. Um I think they're, they're they're not a, a solid a, a solid squad. Surely at nine to two, um it's worth a punt. And, it, and that's not even an <laughs> it's not even an advertisement for Betfred that <laughs> I swear to I mean, like nine to two, third favourites, Newcastle, that's I think that's madness to be honest. Uh, Martin Ridyard and Greg McNally have signed new deals. Uh, with the Lee Centurions, um, so what are your thoughts on that? Obviously, it was, it was previously linked with moves away from the club. Do you, as you say every year, you back them as two good re-signings for them to sort of lead the way again, to see if they can get back to the Super League uh, where they want to be. Um, 
maybe they can do it this year. If you don't back them, maybe they will. So maybe you shouldn't praise them too much. I don't, I don't praise go. them. I just think they all they always build a good squad before the season. Um, so I, th- I I just always look, look at Lee's squad and go, that's pretty strong. I th- They've got I expect, them to, there, they? I expect them to be up, up there or thereabouts. I, I expect them fully to get, get in that top five again. Um, but I think they've got a couple of signs still to make, still to announce as well. Um, Wigan Warriors fullback, young, a, a young kid called Craig Mullen. He's been training with the Lee Centurions recently, as well as Josh Woods, who, who we said on last week's show. Um, so I think they'll have, well, I think they'll make the move. Uh, to the Centurions if they've not already done it. Craig Mullen's a very good player. He, he played for Swindon last year. He's a quality, bit. He, isn't he? He's a very good player, yeah. Um, obviously, if there's that much competition at Wigan, like, maybe he won't get a chance there. But He can, he can play anywhere as well, can't he? He can centers, play full-back, yeah. centre, wing, half. Yeah. He, I think he even played hooker for, for a Wigan first team game as well, um, not too long ago. Uh, we've got a quiz on site as well. Uh, check this week's quiz out. It's can you name all the players who have scored two or more tries in a grand final? A tough one. Um, I didn't do it. It is a tough one. I, I struggle with it to be fair, but I, I'm terrible at quizzes. You you don't want me on, on your pub quiz team because uh, you won't win much. If you've got any comments coming in, any anything you'd like to know, anything you'd like to find out, or anything you'd like us just to, to discuss, keep your comments coming in. Uh, and we'll do our best to, to get through that. St. Helens have tied up youngster, uh, rising star Jack Wellsby on a one year deal, uh, on a four year deal, sorry. Um, big news for the club. Yeah, big news for the club, big news for the player. Good player, solid player. Uh, he's got a very bright future, hasn't he? So to time down a four year only makes sense. Mm. Uh, I think it's very, very good business by, by St. Helens. Uh, the latest mailbox as well on loverabilly.com this week. Is a fan suggesting scrap the referee's on field call for video referee decisions? Do you think it could work? Could it? Is it a stupid idea, a daft idea, or is it a sensible idea? Quite sensible, I guess. Um, yeah, another sensible one. I think we had a sensible one last week as well, didn't we? About the Challenge Cups playing at the Magic Weekend, which. Yeah. Which he, he I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about this one, to be fair. I don't, I don't know if. I don't. Oh, I don't know. Because if the referee then doesn't know as well, should the referee, should, should if the video referee, if there's no on-field call by the referee and then the video referee can't really see it or the camera angle don't pick it up, then what's the video referee meant to do then? Then all the then all the blame will be going on the video referee, won't it? So uh, and and then people will say that the referees aren't having as much as they say as what they should have. Um, so. Who knows? I, I, I scrap the video ref. I'd, 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 I'd scrap. I'd happily scrap the video ref altogether. I think we'll enjoy quicker games. The referees wouldn't receive as much abuse because it wouldn't be played nine times over on a big screen in the ground, um, or on telly for the neutrals at home. So I don't think the referees would receive a quarter of the amount of the abuse that they, they receive at the minute. I think other time uh, fans would start respecting the fact they've got to make a call there and then as well. well they? Uh, uh, but but the main thing is we we would just get get on with the game. So if if someone's foot's been ruled in touch, it's in touch. Bang the scrum. Or if if they're a dead in goal, then it's a twenty meter tap or whatever. It'll, it'll just be instant decisions instead of going for a review for a, for three or four minutes when it's freezing cold and everyone's just stood there. The players as well. The players are cold and the fans are cold and they just they just want the game to be played. And, I think with quicker decisions we'll get a more entertaining product um, but I don't know if the broadcaster uh, will agree because obviously there's a lot of drama surrounding the video yeah, referee. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it'll be happening anytime soon will it? No, no. Uh, Keith Lee have released their squad numbers as well for 2020. Jake Webster getting the number three shirt and big sign for the Cougars. Yeah, big sign for League One. Plenty of experience. Powerful. I think it's a good sign for League One and mm. hopefully you can do a few things with them in 2020. Mm. Uh, Ashley Gibson has joined uh, Newcastle, a former Super League centre, and so has Mikey Wood, who's also joined him from uh, Bradford. Uh, a little bit of news that broke out earlier on uh, this week, Josh. Uh, the Super League shot clock has been reduced by five seconds. How the big news, but I think it, it was right to reduce it because, in my opinion, the 
shot clock in 2019. Uh, I don't I think it was a little bit too long at times. Players were just waiting around to take a drop out, and they were looking at the screen, just waiting for the shot clock to down it down. to run down. So I think it's I think it's a good thing for the game. Um, Everybody wants the game to be faster, don't they? As you say, video ref will no no video ref will make it faster. So this will only make it faster, yeah. entertaining, and you know you can leave the ground a little bit earlier as well. <laughs> going right to lap ten. No one wants to sit, stay at Bellevue for as long. <laughs> no more. I've been there so. Don't blame me, Wakefield fans, honestly. Um, six coaches who could succeed with Bennett as England boss. We have this go on the website. Last Sunday, I believe. Who could be the next contender? We, we think, we assume that Wayne Bennett will be staying on as England coach, but we have picked out six candidates who could replace Bennett as England boss. Number one, Sean Wayne. It's got to be, hasn't yeah. it? Well, the only name that everyone's saying, I think I, I said last week that I think Wayne Bennett will remain, um, just because of his experience and you know, can't all be, I suppose, Great Britain, mm. the disaster of the tour that it was, conflict of interest, moving on, I think he will stay at England, but Sean Wayne, if he was announced tomorrow, I don't think there'd be one unhappy person, would there? Yeah. Maybe, maybe one. Maybe, maybe one. There's always one unhappy person. Um, Ian Watson, possibly. Yeah. Great Britain assistant, Salford head coach, Daryl Powell, Powell. Castleford coach. A lot of people, uh, the, the two names that seem to be ringing out as re potential replacements for, for Wayne Bennett are Powell and Wayne, aren't they? It's because it's, it, we, of what we've seen they can do. Mm. Obviously, Powell with Castleford, what Wayne did at Wayne, because what we've seen what they can do, it'd be exciting to see them lead the international team mm. further and maybe win the World Cup under. Steve McNamara, could he return as England boss? Mm. He was England coach he was. a while ago, well, a couple of years before Bennett. Not, not for me, he's not for me. I, I think he's, he's, when he was in charge, you know, fair play to him, he did quite a lot for England, but mm. I don't think he should get reappointed, that one's not for me. And neither is this next one that you're about to say. Uh, Lubin goes back to the video referee point, says, Defo will get rid of the, the video. Uh, the ref's call on field and just go back to the video ref makes the call simple. Well, fair enough, Louis, fair enough. Uh, Brian McDermott and Dan Danny Ward have been uh, mentioned as well as potential candidates for the England job. Danny Ward, I think, would be a very good assistant, but I don't think I could see him as the head coach anytime soon. And Brian McDermott, uh, I'd, well, I just said then I, I wouldn't see him as England coach, but again, he's he's had some successes that way, and so why not? Fair enough, fair enough. and. We, we spoke about it a little bit earlier on in the show, but we'll go into it in a little bit more depth. The championship odds released by our partners and sponsors, Betfred. Uh, they've been released. One of the favourites at three to one. I'll, re I'll read out the odds and then we'll have a little, little bit of a discussion afterwards. Uh, London three to one, Toulouse seven to two, Lee nine to two, Featherston nine to two, York ten to one, Witness twenty to one, Bradford twenty five to one, Sheffield twenty five to one. Halifax twenty five to one, Batley fifty to one, Swinton fifty to one, Dewsbury sixty six to one, Whitehaven one hundred to one, and Oldham one hundred to one. I'm not gonna put a quid on them, mate. I don't. I, I don't think I'll be making a bet on maybe Dewsbury, Whitehaven, Oldham, Swinton, Batley, or Halifax anytime soon. No. But do you, would you would you back? London to, to gain promotion to uh, uh, yeah to Super I, I am back in London because of that squad you had out earlier uh, the coach in Ward uh, I, I would battle London I, again Toulouse really good team exciting players they've got Ford they've got Mark Carella the full back really really exciting play they, they like attacking rugby uh, and they're good odds at 7-2 to two. I think we could see a final between them two again you've got your lead who got a good side, good signings? They've got Super League players in there. They've got players with experience. And again, Feverston, who have done really well in the off season. So I think it'd be a close one. But if yeah, if I had to put on the spot right now, with the Broncos, I'd go with the Bookies. Hardly ever wrong, are they? Yeah, 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 they, yeah, they, they are hardly ever wrong. You're right. But I'll go for. I'll Don't go. Say it. Don't say it. I'll go for. It's out to Toulouse and leave for me. I don't, I, don't, I don't think London will go back up this year. I think it's out to Toulouse and leave. Go for and Toulouse. The whole form of Toulouse is making me go towards Toulouse, but then I think on paper, the squad's a strong squad. 
and I think John Docker can get something out of this lead side. Uh, it's tough, isn't it? I'm going to stick with London. I think Toulouse is going to be up there. I think maybe the ta I think the table might look London, Toulouse, Featherstone, Lee. I'll leave up. And if you're a York fan, 10 to 1. You know, that last year was their first year in the championship, mm. and they've already 10 to 1. And again, they've, they've, they've re signed a lot of their good players, a lot of their squad players. Um, so to be 10 to 1, you'd be excited to be a York fan, wouldn't you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't even think two years ago that you'd be 10 to 1 to go up to the Super League. So right, I'm saying it. Lee, 9 to 2. Don't put your money on Lee then. That's what I'm going for. I, th I think Lee have got what it takes. Yeah. And you can't argue. I'm saying that. Then I come back to Toulouse. It's Lee or Toulouse. Come on, pick I'll swing towards, I'll swing towards Lee. You say Lee and I say London. Um, but, so put your money on Toulouse. Yeah, I wonder... I wonder what the expansion is for Lee or Toulouse. Yeah, oh. I wonder. <laughs> uh, we've got a, a new feature which is out every Saturday as well called the RL Diet where we, we speak to a player about what they eat, how they train, uh, what supplements they take in association with our sponsors, uh, Heaven and Health. Uh, they provide meal preps from as little as £40 uh, which will fill out over six days as well. Uh, they help with, they help me lose five stone, um, so they must be doing something right. Uh, the RL diet we've had Oliver Gildart as our latest guest. We've also spoken to Chris Hill uh, and Jackson Hastings, so it's not bad. Three Great Britain internationals we we've, we've had as guests on the RL diet so far. Heaven and health again in plenty of popularity uh, amongst the rugby league community so far. It's run by rugby league professionals, uh, the Adamson brothers, Luke and Toby. Um, who obviously played for, for Leeds Insurance last season uh, and they've not got a club yet for 2020 so we'll have to keep our eyes peeled on, on what's to come as well I think they can return to Leeds I think they'll yeah. back them even more if they return to yeah. yeah. We and we've got a, a quiz uh, that goes out every Saturday as well the latest one is on Cathlon's high profile marquee signing in James Maloney um, I wasn't very good at this one James Maloney wow what a signing he is for the Dragons as well uh, Nigel Wood says there's, there are plans needed for home nations and for France, uh, but the International Rugby League cannot be responsible for everything. George, was this from your meeting last week? It was. It, Nigel Wood wasn't at our meeting last week. Uh, he said this following the meeting, so on the back of these quotes coming out of the meeting. Uh, this is what Nigel Wood has said. So, I think. He's right in a in a sense, but the uh, the international rugby league surely has to be responsible for for the home nations and for France because it's the international governing body. They've got to take some responsibility for exactly. the games, haven't they? So so even I I, I agree, but disagree with what Nigel yeah. would say. I agree that a plan a plan or plans are needed for the home nations to grow and for France to grow, but the R the RL well the international rugby league. Um, has to be responsible for, for that and for implementing uh, this plan because there's, there's the international yeah, governing, yeah. governing body. Um, so I, I, I love to see France grow. I know obviously me and James were there the other week we met a couple of passionate people who, are, who want the game to grow in France. And the foundations are already there. It's not as though you're taking a game all the way over to a, a country where rugby league is unknown. It's, very very popular in the in the south of uh, France, uh, in particular. So I think you had a social post, did you not, about two French teams being in the yeah. Super League? And um, what would you think of that? Yes. Yeah, so definitely. Um, yeah. And and you wouldn't struggle for a TV deal then no. in France if you had to lose in Catalan in Super League. You wouldn't you wouldn't struggle for a, a television deal um, in France uh, because every single week you'd work the fixtures. So Catalans were at home one week, then the following week to lose. Then the, the third week, Catalans are at home. The fourth week, Toulouse are at home. You would you would wouldn't honestly struggle for a TV deal. Um, you'd actually attract a lot of interest, uh, and you'd probably be able to make more money. I know not 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 everything's about money, but you, the, the French clubs and Super League themselves will will be able to make more money if there were two French clubs. An interesting point was made on Twitter the other day. Our 
friend Stephen, Stephen Brady, um, who's, who's Catalan media on Twitter, said that he'd put Toulouse and London in Super League for a couple of seasons with, without having any yeah. any relegation. So it, 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 in his words, it expanded the, the, the competition to 14 teams with Toulouse and London. Could that work? Well, why not? I think having having a team from the capital in any sport, you know, there's plenty of them in football, having a, a team in the capital in the Super League will be help with interest, uh, with, you know, broadcast, uh, with, you know, newspapers, with everything, with all sorts of media. And then Toulouse, the number one, as you say, the broadcast deal, the publicity it'll get, the fact that Toulouse are exciting as it is, they've got, they've just moved grounds, have they not, I mm. think for this year, they've got a good fan base. Um, so, why not? If you do it, then obviously everyone's going to go, well, that's promotion relegation gone already. Yeah. Um, but it's a good idea. I'm not against that one at all because I think having the capital no, in, the, in the top league is definitely beneficial and two teams from France is exciting. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree with you. I'd, I'd put to lose it. I'd, put, I'd, I'd expand the competition, put two teams in. You could even put another, you could even put four teams in because league could be sustainable as a full time team. Um, and you could put York in as well, which is a, a, an attractive... Yeah, well, they've just built a new ground, haven't they? I think they're going to start playing in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, the community ground. Um, and they're going places as well. And, exactly. a, and, a, and a beautiful city that, again, will exactly. help with publicity, broadcasting. And it's, it's, even though it's in the Rugby League Heartlands, it's slightly uh, out of the... Yeah, the I, I agree with that. It's a little bit out of the way, isn't it? Um, so I, I'd like to see, to see all our teams in, but we'd have a lot of naysayers. Um, but I'd, if you're putting over four teams and you could scrap Magic Weekend, scrap the loop fixtures uh, and have a more entertaining, entertaining season, home and away, and that'll be uh, your lot as well. So that's that's only my opinion. We'll just read Nigel Wood's quotes. I thought it was very interesting, his, his quotes. Nigel Wood said, We should celebrate the success of the Pacific. We have, have to work out how to develop local players in Wales, Scotland, Ireland and France to bolster the international game in the Northern Hemisphere. But nations have to take responsibility for their own performance. We cannot be responsible for everything. We are seeking to have at least eight fully fledged contenders for every World Cup. So is it like we should only give a toss about the Northern Hemisphere then? And nothing about the uh, about the southern hemisphere, sorry, and not that nothing about the north northern hemisphere. Mm, it's quite controversial, isn't it? I just don't really that that probably that whole quote, in my opinion, just probably ex explains why the whole GB Lions concept was a, a complete farce uh, this autumn, uh, which needs looking at. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, we've got a comment from Dave Parkinson. Uh, hello, Dave. We, Hi, Dave. We've not seen you for a while, Dave. Uh, we've got a comment saying this is a harder one for you. Who will uh, drop from Super League after the 2020 season? We discussed this at the start of the show. I think it's going to be Paul KR, Dev, who, who, who get relegated this time around. I just don't think they've recruited strong enough. What's, Wake, what, what, what's your thoughts on Wakefield? They're always a team that I, I don't I don't think I backed them last year and I had a few replies saying you know, you know, they're gonna do well and I don't think they really did as well as they could have. Mm. I think Wakefield might be might be down there. But I might might just play it safe or stick with you, Drew. I think I just gotta say it's gonna be tough though, isn't I'll, it? But I'll, in terms yeah, of I'll recruitment, Hulk KR have probably you know, all FC have recruited really well yeah. forwards, Huddersfield have got Aiden Caesar, uh, but in terms of recruitment they've got Sean Kenny Dow, who's good on the winger, but I'll, the winger's not gonna yeah. save you from relegation, is he? I think I think um, just talk yeah, just because they haven't recruited as well as I thought they had, and I think the other team on paper compared to all the other teams on paper at this moment in time. Can you um, see Tony Smith side weaker being relegated? Exactly, now? exactly. It's, it's, weird, exactly. Isn't it? it's, it's a hard one. Um, Dave says that domestic leagues need to be developed. Uh, don't agree with giving teams a free pass to the top division unless Super League goes to law and the rest of the game changes. Um, through this season, um, the RFL said, said last week that they were keen on the fast track process of New York and Ottawa. Well, not not of those clubs specifically, but in general, of, of, of expansion clubs, they're not keen on the fast track process. So, a lot of people are saying, well, it's not really fair on the League One clubs if 
you throw Otter in New York and because in effect compared to the budgets of Otter in New York, a barrel for example won't just simply won't be able to compete with the money so it'll be like a couple of seasons wasted um, kind of thing so uh, in regards to the fast track process I don't I think they should, they should just start from the bottom uh, and rise up through the leagues like Toronto will back up on it because you're going to have stumbling blocks Toronto have had stumbling blocks in the first season in the championship and in the inaugural like, season in league one as well uh, you got you you can't just breeze through if you're an expansion club you will have stumbling blocks I think you've got to start from the bottom and work your way up and hopefully then by the time uh, it, they get into Super League if, if they are good enough then uh, so be it that they're in a, they would have been a, or will be an accomplished club uh, like Toronto Wolfpack uh, have gone on to, to be so it's a part of the journey in the headlines as well isn't it if they go straight into the championship to the Super League then the story and the headlines are well they've had they've got straight into the championship and they only had to win that one competition whereas Toronto they've gone from League 1 to Championship to Super League they've got the journey they've learned some things along, along the way they didn't quite make it to Super League from the Championship the first time around as you said so they learned a few things they went back they recruited uh, and the, the story's there from League 1 to the Super League so I, I think they do as you say League 1 teams won't be able to compete with them but they can see it as a chance to bring in people from the community that area will come and watch Broward play New York and that's you know quite attractive yeah. so that's one way they can go about it again they'll say well it's not it's not going to be a year for us to get promoted but let's see it as an opportunity to bring in more people to the game let's let's open up the gates let's get more people in let's get a bit more money in um so i think they, they should, as you say i think they should start from the bottom league one and work their way up yeah yeah I'd, I'd, I'd agree um that i think just about wraps us up uh for today John. uh thanks for being my yeah. guest over there. Maybe James over, will be in next week. Yeah. Maybe we'll James will show. Maybe some love rugby league merch. Maybe next week. I know. I know. Okay. Uh, we, we'll have to kick you out sometime soon. Uh, Dave Parkinson is it his final rugby league game of the year uh, at the weekend at Pilkington Rex in St Tellings as the New South Wales country uh, player England community lines under eighteen and the under sixteen as well. So uh, have fun, Dave. With you, you're off on on your commentary duties as well for the O League app. So the weather's alright. Make sure you check out Heaven and Health and Betfred, our sponsors. We're, it's always a, an honour to, to get sponsorship here at Love Rugby League. Um, a lot of people are getting on the meal prep from Heaven and Health. Uh, just go on heaven-n-health.co.uk to, to order yours. They, they offer one-to-one one to one nutrition advice as well so they suit your needs um, and, and get and and join the journey uh, because it's uh, an ever-growing movement and also check out Betfred who always uh, give the best odds in rugby league so thanks to Josh uh, I've been Drew Darvish your host uh, well we'll see you next time